Hi, welcome to the Rocks Life podcast. I'm Greg, and today's call is with John Wynn. John has just won the men's pro division in High Rocks Madrid in the time of just over 60 minutes. He's an Australian, that's just his third High Rocks race ever, and it gives him the 12th fastest time of the season so far in the men's pro division. Uh, we talk about his training, some of his uh, running numbers, some of his strength numbers, some more. And then we also get into some of his history. So John was part of the Australian Special Forces in the military, uh, and we talk about that. And then also since coming out of the military, John has had struggles with alcohol addiction. So we talk about that some more, the impact that that's had on his life, and then how he's got to a place where he's now been two years sober. Uh, it's a very interesting call with a very impressive, interesting athlete, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey, John, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for thanks for having me. It's uh, great to be here. <laughs> Pleasure. All right. So um, there's tons to cover today. I want to go over. Uh, you've got really interesting background, doing amazingly in High Rocks. If we if we just start with High Rocks, just so uh, people have got the context of, of where you're at right now in terms of performance. Uh, we're recording this on uh, the 5th of December, 2022. So you've just recently won High Rocks Madrid, the men's pro in High Rocks Madrid, right? Yep. Um, and that was your, what was that, your third race ever? That's that's my third race, yeah, yeah. So uh, I had, the, had my first race in April in Vienna, um, and then, uh, then I competed in Valencia and then backed it up in Madrid. Okay, okay. And your first race, uh, time-wise, what, what did you do there? So the, the first time I raced, um, I raced 67 minutes. So um, that was with about two months of prep, um, not knowing really how to train for it. Knowing I had strength, I didn't, uh, wasn't really running much before then. So um, uh, after, after doing that, I, sent, sent, uh, I had 67 minutes and sort of looked what other guys were, were doing, had done in the past. I knew I was uh, on a pretty good uh, track to um, do well in this sport. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Um, what what is your sporting background? What were you doing before this? Yeah. So when I was younger, I was actually a field athlete. So I wasn't track. Uh, I used to throw javelin and discus. That's when I was when I was quite young. Um, so I finished up doing that when I was about seventeen uh, with a, a, an elbow injury. So I, I don't really have an endurance background. Um, not really strength. I was more power. Um, but my my sporting background, I guess sort of come from the, the military, I guess, um, is the best way um, to sort of put it. And I joined the military when I was 20 and um, got into special forces, which were pretty much pretty much athletes, I guess. So that's where I got a lot of my, my pedigree and my, my ability to do what I do now, I, I believe, yeah. Okay, and that's the Australian military, yeah? That's Australian military, yeah, how was it? Right. But, you're, but you're living in uh, Spain right now, yeah? Yeah, I'm in in Mallorca in Spain. I've been here two years. Um, so my wife is Balenciana. Uh, so it, sort of when COVID happened, I I got stuck here, literally stuck here. Uh, we in the when the world sort of shut down. Um, so I got stuck here. Waited for my wife to get here. We weren't married at the time, but she was stuck in Thailand, um, out of all places. So um, we met up, and then we decided to stay here in Spain and um, build a life. And uh, now we're, now we have a daughter um a little spaniola so uh yeah so uh enjoying enjoying spain it's uh a lot more chilled than australia yes yeah? I, I like it it's really relaxed okay yeah perfect all right lovely um <clears throat> and uh just going back to to high rocks in terms of your your performances since vienna you're yeah. you're you're just over the, the 60 minute mark right at the moment yeah, so um, I got 60 minutes and eight, eight seconds uh, in Madrid. I was hoping for a little bit faster time. Um, and that was just purely going off what I did in Valencia. Um, so in Valencia, um, because it was only my second race, they didn't really know who I was. So I started in the, the last wave. Mm-hmm. Um, when I finished, they, they sort of worked out who I was. So this was my first time racing in the, the, the fast wave with the, with the faster guys. So it was, a, it was a good test for me, um, but I, because I did 60 minutes, what, 25 seconds roughly, um, I thought I was going to have a, a, a couple of minutes faster in this race. So um, it was interesting racing in the, in the faster wave. Um, it's a lot different to the, the two times before. It's a lot more competitive, a lot more um, strategy and um, competitiveness, definitely. A bit more, bit more racing as opposed to just it, doing your own it, thing, would you say? 
it was racing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, it was a good experience um, to get that up my belt. Um, and I look forward to uh, doing it again. It's good, it's good fun, yeah. <laughs> you said you, uh, you were hoping to not a couple of minutes off uh, of what you've done in Valencia. And uh, I know we'd spoken a little bit on, on the DMs and you sort of mentioned that. Do you feel like it's hard to say like something went wrong when you've done like 60 minutes and, and a few seconds like in Madrid, but do, do you feel like anything went wrong in that, that race that meant you didn't knock a couple of minutes off? Yeah, so um, the running, uh, I, I felt much, much faster in my running. I put a lot of work into that. I'm not, I'm not a runner, um, but I know I'm, I'm a strong runner. But in Madrid, um, it was very busy. Yeah, like uh, the other times before, I didn't have to. I ran most of the race in the in the slow lane uh, because I couldn't couldn't stay in the fast lane. Um, it's, it's no excuses, but I just know that there's definitely potential there. Um, but there's a few things like the the burpees. I, I put a lot of effort into that. I'm just not quite there with it. Uh, they they built me, um, but I know there's there's 20, 30 seconds to make there. The wall balls. Um, I've struggled with that. There's 20, 30 seconds there. Um, a few other things, but it's really, I, I, I said, is experience and um, getting more cracks at it. Um, like I've only had one proper crack at it in this last uh, competition. So I think it's just, for me, I, I feel it's a matter of time. Um, of just getting more experience. Um, I, I can withstand the intensity and go through it. It's just, I need some more exposure. Yeah, yeah. It's a, we, we, I talk about it a lot, but it's like a huge learning experience. High rocks. You, you take something away from every race, right? And you're like at the 60 minute mark, and your second and third race, it's, it, it, it puts you in good stead for moving forward, really, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that's what I'm hoping. I've sort of looked at um, since I've, I've sort of sunk my teeth into the sport since um, I started it in April, and then looking at what everyone else is doing. And I know I'm on a pretty good, uh, pretty good trajectory. So um, I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and just. Um, not get injured and just keep putting in the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, let's go back to your your time in the military. So you, you joined there when you were 20? Yeah, I joined when I was 20. Um, I joined uh, under a, a program through uh, Special Forces Direct Entry Program. So um, I, I went through that. So it means I didn't get to go through the, the normal sort of recruiting stream in through regular military. So I got trained up really fast with that um, and then got to do the selection course with uh, uh, to be a qualified commando. And um, that all happened pretty fast within a year. Um, and then I was qualified and um, deployed by the time I was uh, 22 to, uh, to Afghanistan, yeah. So, so physically at that age, you must have been in pretty good nick anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the the program was essentially set up for guys who had um, a, a a good fitness background, sporting background, and a bit of a high aptitude as well. So, um, all, all the guys I went through uh, with uh, quite um, quite high achievers in the sporting world. Okay, and that that really purely came from like the the, the track and field work that you were doing at the time, yeah. Yeah, like uh, the 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 field work when I was when I was younger, um, yeah. and I, I guess playing I played football, played rugby. Um, but it was really athletic, so I excelled in, yeah, but pretty much that's where it came from. Okay, okay. I don't know if you saw, I spoke to James Kelly, who won the, the Birmingham men's pro races from Australia. Um, yeah, yeah. Nah, it'd nah. Be, be, be interesting to see if, if, if two Australian winners already this season without going to Australia for High Rocks. It'd be interesting to see what, what happens when you, we go over there, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's funny, yeah, like I've um, had a couple of clients here on holidays and um, they've, they've started following me and now... Back in uh, back in Melbourne, um, guys are doing it back there. Yeah, like it tra training for it. it it's it's going to have to go to Australia. Australia will produce some um, some good high rocks athletes just from the the running. Yeah, like a lot of our, our ball sports um, involve a lot of running, uh, like the AFL that James plays. Um, I, I, obviously, I'm a little bit different to me with rugby, um, but yeah, it'll be good good once it goes back there. It'll do really well. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you uh, how, how long were you in the military for? So uh, I went through 2007 to 2013. Okay. So that, yeah, got in, did uh, four tours in Afghanistan in four years. And how was that? How was that experience for you? Yeah, it was it was it was good. It um it helped shape me for, sort of for for my life. I, I grew up fast. Um, I probably. If I could do it again, I'd probably do it a little bit slower, to be honest. 
Um, it was a lot at quite that at that age. Um, but like I, w- I wouldn't, I can't change anything, and you know I wouldn't want to. But yeah, definitely um, grew up fast. Um, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Is there um, is there like uh, in in this in the spe- this might be a stupid question to be fair, but in in this special forces, is there a culture of excellence that that you think transfers over to to the sporting world, or or is it not so much? I've he- I've heard some like guys from the SAS talking recently, and it probably wasn't the culture of excellence that I always necessarily thought it was. Um, I think there there are in certain aspects, but there was like a huge drinking culture and and things like that in there um what's your experience in the, in the aussie special forces yes yeah, so i guess excellence is a good way to put it um one of the uh the things we do well is, is basics yeah so you do the basics well um but it's it's the competitive culture yeah like everyone's trying to sort of um outdo each other uh the um sort of inter-team inter-platoon um company rivalry um, sort of pushes each other, but everyone is trying to better themselves. Yeah, um, it's just it's just really competitive. And to get into to pass a, a, a selection course, which takes a month, yeah, which really breaks you. Um, uh, really, uh, you have to be mentally strong. So it builds the people who get to the units. Um, oh, you know, special forces all around the world. They're they're strong, capable individuals. Yeah, and then you get them together, and then they just grow within that. Yeah. It's a steel sharp and steel. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, okay. So you uh, came you came out of the military in, in 2013, right? Yeah, I came out of the military and then I was a contractor. So I, was, I went back back to Afghanistan and I contracted um, through the, an American uh, company for a bit and then uh, worked for the Australian uh, embassy. So diplomatics, yeah. Okay, like that is a like security. Yeah, like, so um, sort of security detail, looking after um, uh, workers, uh, ambassador stuff like this. So I did that for two years, and then returned to Australia at uh, mid two thousand fifteen. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. Um, so I know over over that time or, or or since then you 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 got into drinking, um, <laughs> and because like on your Instagram you shared like your. You've now been sober for for twenty months, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no, two two years now. So, um, I my daughter's one one year old now. So, um, uh, it's yeah, it's been two years. So we share share the same uh, or roughly the same um the same date. So my sobriety and her um her birthday, yeah, okay. just a year Brilliant. apart. Right. Can 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 we talk about that? that yeah. how, how that drinking started and and, and what that looked like? Yeah, obviously, it's no um. It's no sort of um, – uh, in Australia, there's a, there's a huge drinking culture, yeah, and then you get into the military, obviously, is, uh, it's quite a bit more prominent. Um, and it's – yeah, it's it's, enc- it's it's encouraged, I guess, but it's just accepted. Um, so drinking in the military was – it was heavy, but I always used to manage it, yeah. It was really um, – the wheels sort of fell off for me personally. The, the drinking is, is when I left the military and I left um, – that sort of support network, the brotherhood, um, that's when the, the wheels sort of come off and <clears throat> uh, alcohol, drugs were, were um, a big part of my life and how I dealt with things and how I coped um, and how I just sort of accepted my way of living. And um, that went on for a lot of years, uh, a lot of years of heartache and a lot of years of pain. Yeah. Was it, what, what, what? What was it? What was it giving you? Was it because was it a, a way of coping, like with some of the experience that you had in the military, or was it just like you you were missing something because you didn't have that brotherhood and it was just like? It, yeah, to, to be honest, um, I, it's a combination of a lot of things. Like I've, I've worked through a lot of this with therapy, um, which is very necessary. Um, yeah, look, like I think um, it's it's definitely a coping mechanism. Yeah, like it's um, you drink to um, to. At the start, it was drinking just to enjoy life. Then it became drinking to deal with life. And, on, and I couldn't deal with life on life's terms. So it was definitely a Band-Aid. Um, it allowed me to sort of fit in and, and function, yeah. So for, for a long time, I was highly functioning. And then then it gets to the point where you're not functioning. Mm-hmm. And you, you um, barely sort of uh, can 
just do daily tasks, um, work, all these sort of things. Uh, every every job I've had, I've ended up I lost due to alcohol and, and drug issues. Um, uh, there's nothing good which end up coming out of it at the end. Yeah, so it all leads. Um, it's uh, progressive um, disease sort of which gets worse if you identify as an alcoholic or an addict like it just gets worse as you get older and I can definitely um, relate to that wow. yeah okay all right uh, so were you over, over sort of that that period were you uh, still doing sport still training no <laughs> nah, there's, there's no way I could have <laughs> so I've, I've lost um I lost a good five six years there of anything there so I'm I'm definitely making up for some uh some lost time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's good. Good. You've got to the place you're at now though. Mate. Yeah. 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 Like it, I look back and um, I used to look back and have, you know, there's a lot of feelings come up and a lot of emotions about where I come from, but now I've got a bit of distance and I can look back and reflect and it's um, not, not stay back there. Yeah. Like it, it, now it's just all looking forward and moving uh, in a, in a good direction in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there, was there anything in particular that, sort of the spark the like two years ago was it having your daughter that like was really like the the kick up the ass that you needed or yeah so with me uh i went through the the recovery process many times like um i'm pretty open about this i, I did 15 rehabilitations trying to yeah over, over a few years um so it was a lengthy process of me I, I knew i wanted to get clean and sober it's just um I wasn't obviously ready at the time, um, you know, like with, with recovery, it's not just you do, you know, three, four weeks, get clean and sober, and then you, that's it, you just move on in life. This is something which um, I had to accept that this is for the rest of my life and um, there's no going back to picking up. Um, but it was essentially uh, I just had enough, um, enough, enough pain and heartache and hurting people around me um, and being sort of isolating my mental health deteriorated huge uh like I, I was one crazy guy um very um very unwell mentally physically and emotionally um but i knew i wanted to change but it, it literally took me to to do a rehab here in spain and um come to mallorca which i owe a lot to this place and um just get enough time up working with a therapist working with um uh a, a team and just um sort of tapping this on the head the, the problems and facing them and then owning them and then moving forward. And, and uh, a big part of um, my sobriety now is actually helping other people, um, helping them um, go through the same process I, I had to go through. And uh, it's very re rewarding for me to see that. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, okay. All right, well, thanks for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> so um, you, you discovered High Rocks somewhere along the way, right? Yeah, so uh it's funny so there's a there's a gym here i go to or i go to a few gyms but um there's a big one here where they actually were running high rocks events so when um when i got stuck here in covid and got clean and sober uh, I, I wanted to compete at something uh, i didn't know sort of what it was but i started doing jujitsu so i was wrestling um did that got into it um but there's no competitions on <laughs> because of covid so um, I talked to my wife about this, like I couldn't wait for competitions to happen. And um, I was really getting hungry to get back into the uh, competition world. Can you, and in recovery, you've actually got to be careful because you can take on too much and um, it can mm. stimulate yeah, where you want to go back and pick up and use. Yeah, So something I had to um, navigate. But uh, at the gym, I found um, High Rocks. They were running some, um, some classes and uh, some competitions at the gym. And literally I seen it and seen there was running and seen there was strength. And I, I, I used to enjoy running. I wasn't that great. I was okay. But um, I sort of missed that. And I hadn't been able to run for years. Yeah, like um, I had knee surgery from my time in the military. Um, I hadn't run in five, six, seven years. It had been before, before I, um, I went down my, my uh, bad path. Yeah. So um, I, I looked like the look of it, and that's literally I seen it at the gym, and then um, got into it. Okay, uh, and did did you instantly feel like you'd you'd be good at it? I did, yeah, yeah. So this is um, military written all over it. Yeah, for for me, how I seen it. This is my sort of pedigree, my the special forces background, where I can push shit, I can carry shit, uh, I can jump, I can 
um, move for long periods of time um, at, at high intensity and just keep going. Um, so I knew I was going to be okay at it. I didn't know how good, but um, as soon as I found this, I was, I was telling mates, like, this is, like, you need to get into this. Like, this is what we, this is how we used to train, yeah. Mm. yeah. <clears throat> okay, great. So um, in terms of your training right now, what, what, uh... What does that look like? I, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a general question, I guess. Uh, are you training six days a week, a few times a day? What does that look like? Yeah, so I'm six six days a week. Uh, I'll be two sessions a day. Uh, when, I, when I first started um, uh, before Vienna, I was just five five days a week, one session a day. And um, after doing Vienna, I realised, like, uh, there's, if I want to be competitive at this and good at this, I need to, I need to be at least two a day. And I need to be running a shitload more. And that's exactly what I did in the, throughout the off-season. But now, um, yes, six days at two, two a day. Um, and that consists of um, it'll be four or five days of running. I've got three uh, strength sessions. And then I've got some um, conditioning, two to three conditioning sessions in there with recovery bike rides and some stretching and, um, and, and whatnot. Okay. What did the... <clears throat> high level what what are the strength sessions like are they full body sessions yeah yeah so um, that's yeah i'm very open with how i do this like um i, I show people on my instagram exactly exactly how i train so full body um i squat um bent over row like i do all these things i noticed uh when i competed in vienna what i did was i i had a, a more strength then than i do now but what i did was i for, for eight weeks i stopped strength training and I was just pushing the sled, pulling the sled. And I thought that was going to be enough and um, competed in, in Vienna and um, uh, came back to strength training and I'd lost all my strength. So what I, what I uh, approach I did this time was I'm, I'm not going to lose my strength. So during the off season, I built it up and then I've, I've, I'm keeping it now. So I've just, uh, I'm hitting um, every body part, but just keeping my strength and I'm, I'm, putting a lot down um, my capacity to push the sleds and pull the sleds down to that. I'm, I'm just not losing it like I did last time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, running wise, are you, um, I guess there's a mixture of like slow, steady sessions in there, some intervals, things like that. Yeah, look, it, it's evolved a little bit. So it's changed since, um, since Valencia, but what I was doing, I was doing about uh, 80, 70 to 80 kilometers a week. Yeah, so I was, I was doing um, quite a few kilometres. Now it's down to about 50. Um, and that'll be Monday is um, my speed session. So that's 12 to 15 kilometres. Um, and then Wednesday is recovery run. Thursday is compromise running. Friday's recovery run. Saturday is compromise running again. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. And, and what... Where are you at in terms of uh, some of those running? Uh, is it, I think I saw on the Instagram you've done the 10K relatively recently. Yeah, so I, after uh, I competed in Vienna, um, I, I know I needed to get better at running. So I entered a 10K race and that was in June. Um, that I've never done a running race. Uh, when I told mum I was doing this, um, she couldn't believe it. <laughs> like I'm a thrower, yeah? I'm, not, I'm not a runner. So... I was committed to this, so I trained for it, and then I, I got a thirty-seven minutes forty. So it, it's not that great, yeah. Um, I hear some of these other uh, pro athletes like they're low thirty minutes, and I don't have that capacity. I don't have that leg speed. Um, I just I'm a strong runner, I believe, and this is what it's showing, yeah. Like uh, I just can hold that pace for long enough and just grind through it. And but um. Yeah, like a, I'm, I'm an example. Like you don't have to be a great runner to be in this sport. You just have to be strong. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, it's obviously still a very good time. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> but you've got you've probably I suspect anyway you've got a lot more strength than than some of those guys that are doing thirty two minutes or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah, like it, just the um the the it's fast enough for me to hold hold um hold a good time but it's just it's not um you know 32 minutes or 33 minutes like james uh, you know these other guys it's they leave me for dead yeah. yeah do you feel like that's if if you want to improve going forward do you feel like that that is going to be where you need to continue to to place your focus yep so i've sort of looked at other guys and where i'm at so it's i'm only sort of i've only just got my head around how so the, the high is 8.7 kilometers yeah so 
the I was always thinking that the uh, each lap was uh, each um, each round was a kilometer, but obviously different tracks now. I'm learning at different rock zones, so yeah, that, yeah. So the eight point seven k's, you know, like I, I'm doing it in thirty five minutes, so that puts me at four minutes a kilometer. Um, I'm looking at the other guys, and I'm really I'm, I'm not far behind them. Um, no. I'm, I'm right there with them, and it, um, it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah, like I. I'm not a great runner, as I keep saying, but I'm, I'm there with them. So uh, I think to be um, the sort of uh, be there in the you know the top guys right at the end, I need to get that down probably thirty to forty five seconds, and then uh, I'm, I'm right there with the top guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know my listeners like listening to these like strength numbers and the you know yeah. you're running times and everything like that. But uh, so it, in terms of strength, where are you at deadlifting, squatting? Yes, yeah, so look, I haven't I haven't deadlifted in in a while, yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's 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 probably been about eighteen months since I've deadlifted. But uh, deadlifts, it's about one forty for about six reps. Um, it's it's not that impressive. Uh, my squat now, um, so for a front squat, my last time uh, that was I was doing one one hundred and ten kilos for sets of three. Um, my back squat now, uh, is about 130 for three reps. That was about three weeks ago. Um, I want to try to get that up a little bit, but, um, what I'm finding is that that's enough strength to, to push the sleds and pull the sleds, uh, as I'm saying, like I'm one of the, one of the better ones for this. And, um, that strength is right around to, uh, enough to, to suffice, yeah. um, bench, bench press, I, haven't, I don't really do it that often, to be honest. Uh, it's it's about a bit over 100, 105 for three reps. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, military press, that's it's about 70 kilos for six reps as well. Um, yeah, the, the, the numbers aren't that Im- impressive, but it's it's enough for, for this sport, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've talked about that before on here as well, like that being strong enough um yeah but you don't have to be crazy it's not like crazy strength gains continue to improve your time necessarily yeah so this is a good thing i like about hyrox here like the the strong the bigger and stronger you are means you're going to potentially have less running speed and uh the bigger muscle more muscles you have is the more energy is required for you to move so it's a good combination you have to give and take um how much strength do you put on so you know put on strength that takes time and recovery so how do you get that recovery in when you're doing conditioning and running? So it's it's a juggling act to um to get all these and um get them all balanced and then into a training program where you can um can uh, move forward and make improvements. Yeah. What do you um do you think you've done anything wrong training wise up to this point? And maybe not, but uh you know it's it's I don't think anyone truly knows the perfect way to train for this at the moment. Do you feel like there's been mistakes that you've made so far? Mistakes. Um, the only mistake, so before I, I did my first race, was to not strength train. Um, and I lost lost it all. I went When I went back to squatting, I was doing like 80 kilos. Like I lost 40, 50 kilos in my squat. Right. So straight away I went, look, I, I need to keep it and it's working. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like this is so still so new for me. Um I think um, by the end of the season, I'm definitely going to have <laughs> – there'll be a few um, a few corrections that need to be made. And, like, I'm, I'm learning, like, a, you know, like I do my best to um, sort of see what other people are doing, but people are doing <laughs> just different things, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah. like I see a lot of people doing enoms and MRAPs, and, like, I, I don't do any of that. <laughs> it's not how I train yet and what I'm doing seems to be working so I'm open to ideas and I'm trying to um now I'm going to races more and I'm talking to people and sitting down with them and I'm trying to find out like take little bits and pieces but I I don't think I'm doing anything wrong so far because it my my times are okay yeah (laughs) yeah probably yeah (laughs) and it continues to evolve right over time so like you've just done the last race and you mentioned maybe you need to work on the burpees and the wall balls and then you do another race and like that that will change again so it sort of continues to evolve with with where you're at at any one point in time right yeah look i think like this is a 
the Horrocks is a fitness race. So fitness sort of being the key word, like you need to get fitter. Yeah. So if I can hold the strength, hold my running, it's just getting fitter. Yeah. So racing um, allows me to like, you can train hard, but a race pushes you like that, mm. that, that really takes it out of you. So every race I can do, I know I can dig that little capacity, um, my capacity to go harder for longer out and, um, it's just getting fitter, yeah. So you know, finishing that station and be able to get to top speed as fast as I can. Um, that's really where I think um, I'm, I'll be focusing on is just getting up to that top speed and not having to sort of um, dawdle and get my breath. That's and, and every race, uh, every hard session just allows me to get going harder and faster. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. You sort of mentioned there about like a race allows you to push yourself and, you know, like no training does really. Um, mm. I wanted to ask you about the mindset side of things. And it's, it's, I ask a lot of people this, especially, but especially interested as you've come from the military, I, I presume that sort of mindset gets developed over that period as well. Um, how do you, wh- wh- where does your mind go when you, when you're in those really tough times in the race is there certain things that you think about, don't think about, focus on, anything like that? Yeah, so the first couple of races, I, um, I was sort of on my own. Um, I was, yeah, sort of focusing um, just on, on, on myself, yeah. So it the the first couple of races hurt, hurt me a lot. Um, but mentally, like I'm used to pain, I guess. Um, it's something I can sort of... Um, a bit, I guess, proud of like, and it's it's definitely something I've developed through. Like, I've, I've done a selection course. I've I've done all these things when I was younger. Yeah, so I know I have the capacity to withstand it. Yeah, um, but in this last race, um, being a competitive race, my mind was um, on the race, like it was on winning, <laughs> literally. Yeah, like my goal wasn't to win, but I started hard and in the front, and it was just the pain sort of um, wasn't really present. Yeah. I think it, it will start to creep back in the more experience I, I get. But that was a lot of uh, a lot of nerves and adrenaline and expectations. But um, definitely that that mindset is something you can train. Yeah, like you just have to um, do it incrementally and not bite off too much. I see a lot of a lot of people um, training for this high rock, especially locally, and they're just going real hard all the time and just going you know hundred um, percent. And they, they only can last 100% for a few minutes. That's it. Yeah. Like you've got to be able to go to that threshold where you can sustain it and then hurt and then do that for five minutes. And then next time, 10 minutes, next time's 15, 20, and just work your way up and get used to that, that voice in your head that, um, that tells you to stop. It slowly starts to go away. Yeah. But you've got to do it incrementally and not big chunks because then it hurts and um, you're less likely to come back and give it a crack next time. Is it, is it, to, for, for you is it that the voice in your head goes away is it like you ignore it is it you you distract yourself with happy thoughts is it is there a, a certain way that you think about it um for me it's just like uh, it's encouragement i encourage myself that's now now the it's not at the point where like you know it's you can do this yeah like uh i've done that many um simulations in training which I go longer than the race. So the race feels quite short for me. <laughs> so it's, it's over a lot faster than what I train. So in that way, um, it's by the time I'm getting really deep, the race is nearly over. Um, yeah. But it's it more, more, it used to be sort of the negative um, voice, but now it's positive. Now it's, um, it's positive affirmations for me. Um, I know I, I can do this, yeah. Okay. But it's, it's, a, it's a process, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you, so are you racing in Frankfurt this coming weekend? Yeah, so I decided to sign up again uh, after Madrid. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with the time, but look, it was it was a um, it was a good race. Like I got a lot of good experience out of it. Um, however, sort of at that sort of twelfth place now in the rankings, um, I should be happy with that, but I, <laughs> I'm uh, not quite. So um, I see in the, the Madrid race is a good uh, learning curve and good experience. So being Frankfurt's uh, two weeks apart, I thought I'd sign up again to get another race in. And then hopefully I'm in the, um, the, the, the 15 in, in Maastricht, um, where that's where I, you know, I'd like to get the top three. Um, but I think I'd really benefit from another, another race this week. 
to get over there, you know, hit the German sleds, see see what all the talk is about, see if the, the Spanish sleds are faster. Um, but to do that, it's, it's mainly for experience um, to get another uh, fast race up my belt where I'm starting with the fast guys and I'm um, really get to push myself and then hopefully get a, a sub 60 minutes and then, um, yeah, to sort of set me up for the, the rest of the year. Oh, nice. Nice. I, th- I, think, I think there'll be a few people over there, actually. There's, I think a lot of people have that goal, right? They're, they're knocking on the door of that 15 and uh, yeah, it's, it's the last it's, chance almost. It's bloody competitive, yeah. Like uh, you look down, like um, I'm sort of holding in there, so I'm happy with that, but it's that's not going to last, yeah. Like the way the guys are and um, being in Europe, yeah, like there's a race on <laughs> every, seems like every week, which mm. is great, you know, like, it's great for me. Um, like my body's holding up. I can I can bounce uh, from these races, yeah, especially being my first year. Um, I can get a few up and not um, you know take too much casualty on my body. That's what, that's how I feel. But um, it's great being in Europe and not in Australia. You can't you can't do this in Australia and travel, you know, over overseas for a competition for you know for a night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happens. So I'll take advantage of it while I'm here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, and. Um- before we finish up, I, I should have asked this back when we were talking about the uh, the drinking and so on. Is there any uh, like pieces of advice that you would give to someone that was maybe in a similar position to you that's, that's watching this that you know to that, to help get them out of it? Yeah, it's like uh, the first thing is like once once you realise, I guess you have a problem is you you're not going to solve it yourself. <laughs> I tried this. Um, you, you need to sort of, you need to surrender. Yeah, you need to surrender to a program, or you need to reach out and get help. That's essentially the first step: is to to reach out, get help, um, acknowledge you have a problem, um, then you have to accept it, and then surrender. So the thing with with me is I I fought it for so long. I thought I knew better. I thought I was you know the odd one who was going to be able to do it themselves. Like I'm, I'm nothing special. I'm like everyone else. But it's you need to get into some type of program, uh, working with someone who's more qualified than you are, especially if, if you are in the point in life where you're under the influence all the time and you're in it, you're an addict or an alcoholic, your your thinking isn't too straight. Yeah. Like it's you need to so you need to hand that over to someone else um, and uh, follow some directions for a while. Yeah. Why you can detox and get your brain thinking. Um, thinking correct again yeah and then in that process like it took me a good 12 months before i could think clearly have clarity problem solving skills um be able to sit with myself and be at peace it's a long process um of recovery but yeah surrendering and getting to a program is the number one advice i'd give okay okay and i guess i don't want to put words in your mouth but like i guess having this sport and or having a sport and a focus um helps as well right yeah, for, for me, so I, I'm very sort of uh, goal driven um, and it sort of, it helps me um, know where I'm going in life, but also the competitiveness. But yeah, this, the the fitness uh, is a, um, a big tool in my, um, for my recovery. And this is sort of how I help people. And this is the message I push that um, committing to something hard, committing to something which allows you to grow as a, as a person, get stronger, get faster, wh- whatever you want to do. Because you know, getting making improvements physically, for me personally, like it affects me mentally. It improves my mental uh, clarity and my mental health. Um, but yeah, it definitely definitely helps. It's it's what it's what I get up in the morning now for. Apart from my, my daughter and uh, my you know, clients I'm working with, um, this this uh, this sport and this sort of high rocks now is is my um, my my focus now. Um, and I'm making up for lost time in uh, the last sort of five, six years. Mm. All right. So you you mentioned working with clients. So you what you, you personal training now? You? Yeah. So I do face to face here in, in Mallorca. Uh, I decided to get that qualification while I was in, in COVID and get recovering. So I got that. Um, so I work with clients face to face. I work with sort of clients in recovery as well, and then I do online as well. So I've got a, a mixture of. Um, people who are in recovery and like fitness. And then I've got uh, um, people who want to improve their running, want to strength train, um, sort of people who can relate to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And where where do people go to find out about that? Yeah, so you can, uh, I'm on Instagram. Um, I've got a, a website as well, which is 
uh, drumwindfitnessandsobriety.com. Uh, you can find information on there. There's uh, there's actually a, uh, a video on there on the front page, so you can actually watch and listen to a, a story which uh, goes through it. Nine ten minutes of, about my story, pretty much what we've gone through. Um, but yeah, I've got information on there for anyone who's, who's interested. All right, brilliant. All right, well, thank you for sharing everything that you've shared. Um, it's amazing to see like where you've come from and where you are now. Uh, it's amazing to see what you're doing in the sport. Uh, so best of luck going forward. Best of luck for the weekend. Um, is there anything before we go? Is there anything else you wish I'd asked, or anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, it's, it's funny, like, I actually knew you were going to ask this, and I, I haven't been able to think of anything. <laughs> um, nah, there's not there's not really anything. Yeah, like, I'm glad that this opportunity, um, I sort of uh, look, I was looking forward to sort of push this message that, you know, anyone can come from um, a shit period in their life and struggling and think they've lost everything, and um, you can get you can um, get out of this, yeah, with a plan, um, have a goal, work towards it, work hard. Uh, consistency discipline resilience develop all these skills and um you can get back on track and um make something of yourself and uh, that's the message i sort of want to push is that anyone can do this yeah you just got to have a plan and uh, stick to it mm -hmm. all right perfect all right well thank you um i really appreciate this and uh oh, yeah, much, good, good luck for everything going forward i no, appreciate it thanks very much mate all awesome right. take care everyone